So it's fair to say British politics in a fairly tumultuous state of the world, with a very real threat for no deal breaks ahead of us. And this is particularly concerning for things like agriculture and fisheries, because the prorogation of Parliament has meant that the agriculture and fisheries bills have fallen, have basically been put on hold, have failed to pass through Parliament. So if we do exit on the 31st of October, we currently have no rules in place for how we will manage those activities. So that's why I'm delighted that people in nature have decided to publish our paper today, which presents a stakeholder-informed vision for the future of agriculture and fisheries in the UK after Brexit. What we did to put together the work for this paper was we held a series of workshops and events and did questionnaires and interviews with key stakeholders across those two uh, key sectors. And they were asked to present their priorities for what might happen after Brexit, but also their concerns and what they thought the key challenges were. So really encouraging, the sort of single most powerful message to come from that exercise was that people see sustainability as being essential to the delivery of you know, livelihoods and goods and services from agriculture and fisheries. We have a situation at the moment where the balance is not right. We have some landowners receiving most of the benefits of the European Union in terms of subsidies. And likewise in fisheries, we have quota, catching opportunities, very much concentrated in a few hands and a lot of other people working on small boats around the coast really struggling to make a living. So both the authors of this paper but also importantly the stakeholders that we connected with really want to see a rebalancing of that situation and a more fairer and a more sustainable future really embraced by the UK government as we move ahead at this sort of fairly uncertain time.